Here's your definition of tone, the attitude that a speaker takes towards a subject, a character, or the reader. Now, you may be wondering if this is the same concept of tone that you maybe have heard from your parents a time or two whenever they look at you and say, I don't like your tone. And you're right, that is tone. The attitude with which you say something matters, and it can completely change the way in which a word or a phrase is read or interpreted. For example, if I assign 30 pages of reading for homework, a student could respond with, great, or, great, or, great. And the tone would dictate how I'm supposed to understand if he or she is excited or frustrated or just being sarcastic. Now that example is auditory, but I'm sure that you've struggled with tone in writing before. Like when you have trouble reading the tone of a text message. Uh, not being able to interpret tone may be left you feeling confused or frustrated or even upset. So let's be real for a minute. It's worth your time to work on getting better at identifying tone. Okay, so for starters, it's important to understand that when you're describing the tone of a work, that you're describing how the speaker sounds. That means that you need to select a word that describes how someone can sound. For example, a speaker doesn't sound courage, they sound courageous. Uh, a speaker doesn't sound complaining, a speaker sounds critical. Consider this rule number one. Pick a word that describes how a person might sound. Rule numero dos. Select the perfect adjective to describe the tone and don't settle for a general or simplistic word. Therefore, if you find yourself defaulting to words like angry or happy or sad or mad, try to use a big kid word uh, by finding a more specific synonym to describe the tone. Okay, rule number three. Don't be afraid to use two or three words to describe the tone in a work. Oftentimes, one word won't be enough to capture the speaker's tone, so always try to come up with three, four, five words to describe tone, then pare that down to the best two or three from your brainstorming list. Finally, rule number four, remember that tone can shift. What I mean is, is that a poem might start off sounding optimistic and cheerful, but by the last stanza take a twist that is dark and foreboding. So it's okay to note that shift in your answer by saying that the tone of the work starts out cheerful, but turns foreboding in the final stanza. And now it's time to practice. I don't even know what that was, just going with it. We're having fun. So let's look at an excerpt from the poem Still I Rise by Maya Angelou and try to identify the tone in this stanza. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. All right, so to identify tone, I'm gonna look at two things. The first is the context of the lines. Here we have some pretty serious subject matter. There's a conflict rooted in hatred, but the speaker expresses a hopefulness or willingness to rise above this conflict and not let it impact her. Those attributes of the message lead me to select words like confident and optimistic as tone words for this poem. All right, part two to assigning great tone words to a poem. It's important to look at the word choice in the poem to see what the subtleties there might reveal about the tone. As I read this stanza, the verbs shoot, cut, and kill jump out at me. Though the lines are talking about words, and looks, and hatred, uh, the words that I just noted make this conflict physically harmful to the speaker, so I could argue that the tone of this poem is aggressive or confrontational. And if I were asked to identify this tone in a poem, I would respond with, the speaker's tone in Maya Angelou's poem, Still I Rise, is both confrontational and confident as the speaker is optimistic in her approach to the conflict she faces. That's all for our example in poetry. Let's go to the recap. Definition recap, when we're talking about tone in a work, we're talking about the attitude that the speaker takes towards a subject, a character, or the reader. Okay, so for all this video's content in a nutshell, I'm going to say that when you're looking for tone, consider the content and the word choice, and then brainstorm a list of three to four words that are very specific that describe the way the speaker sounds. Then you need to whittle that list of three or four down into two to three words. And then also remember that if the tone shifts over the course of a poem, that you need to make sure that you explain that shift in your answer. Thanks for learning about how to identify a speaker's tone in a poem with me today. If you have any additional questions, be sure to follow up with your small group teacher.